Welcome to the second episode in an ongoing Legendarium series about the Seven Kings of Rome. In this episode, we will talk about the second king, Numa Pompilius. According to lore, Numa Pompilius was born on the very day of Rome's founding, April 21st, 753 BC. Little else is known about his early life. Some 37 years after the founding of Rome, Romulus, the kingdom's first ruler, disappeared during a thunderstorm. Many suspected the patricians, or Rome's leading men, of murdering him. At least until Julius Proculus informed the people that he had a vision of Romulus, who said that he had been taken up to join the gods. From then on, he would be worshipped under the name Quirinus. Later Romans suspected that this story simply covered up the murder of Rome's first king who became a tyrant who enraged the village's leading men. In the meantime, the Romans began arguing over who their next king should be, though it's important to note that Rome remained a collection of hilltop hamlets and it would have been led by a war chief, not a king. It is also important to note that Rome and another tribe, the Sabines, shared the same ruler during Romulus's later years. For a time, Rome's leading men, called senators but likely simply successful warriors and farmers, decided they would take turns being king, trading off every 12 hours to prevent another tyrant like Romulus from emerging. However, the people feared that the leading men would keep this going forever to keep power in their hands. In time, they decided that the Romans would elect a Sabine and that the Sabines would elect a Roman. By this means, the Romans made a Sabine named Numa Pompilius their second king. Pleased to have a chief of their own tribe, the Sabines simply elected Numa as well. His election came as a great surprise to Numa, who lived near the village of Cures. His father-in-law, Tatius, ruled as joint king with Romulus for five years during Numa's younger years. Nonetheless, after the death of his first wife, Numa became something of a recluse who freely roamed the forests. Myths claim that a nymph or nature spirit took Numa as her lover. When the Roman delegation came, Numa refused the kingship, but his father, kinsmen, and some of the local people from Curus talked him into it. They noted that for more than a generation, the Romans under Romulus warred with their neighbors. It would surely be better if the Romans had a peace-loving ruler who could keep them from waging war so often. And if nothing else, a king Numa would make certain to leave Curus in peace. Having agreed to accept the position, Numa left for Rome. But before he completely and finally accepted, Numa insisted on watching the sky for a sign in the flight of birds that his kingship would be acceptable to the gods. We can assume the omens proved good. For his first act, Numa dismissed the warriors who Romulus kept as his bodyguards. Numa also refused any luxuries, eating plain food and living in a hut like his subjects. However, he reasoned that people needed something to fill their time besides war, so Numa filled it with religious processions and sacrifices. He created the office of Pontifex Maximus, who oversaw religious rituals and ceremonies. Successful completion of the rituals meant following incantations, prayers, and movements precisely. Even the squeaking of a mouse could be grounds for repeating rituals, which could be done 20 or 30 times before being being judged complete. Early Romans worshipped a trinity of gods including Jupiter, king of the universe, Quirinus, god of the city, and Mars, god of war. A host of spirits filled the Roman universe, giving life and divinity to streams, forests, and fields, which endured in the veneration shown to legionary eagles. In this regard, early Romans might not be so different from Native American nations in their approach to faith. Numa also created a calendar based on the cycles of the moon, divided into 12 months and which remained in use for centuries. In Romulus's time, the calendar remained fixed at 360 days each year, but the number of days in a month could vary immensely. 
Numa estimated the solar year at 365 days and the lunar year at 354. He doubled the difference of 11 days and created a leap month to come between February and March. Numa made January the first month and he may have added the month of February to the calendar as well. In keeping with his religious devotion, Numa named January after the two-faced god Janus. To keep the Roman people enthralled, Numa told them of fantastic happenings that showed the gods anger or pleasure. These tales included a shield supposedly falling from the sky into the village. Numa created a new group of priests called the Salii who paraded around the city each year, carrying the shield and dancing in armor. He is also credited with creating the Vestal Virgins, only four in number in his time. They took charge of keeping Rome's sacred flame alight and preparing mixtures of grain and salt used in sacrifices. It is important to note that these priestly bodies would not have been professional priests. Rather, they would have been leading men and women who took on priestly duties when not tending their farms. Since Romulus conquered several neighboring villages and seized their land, Numa gave it to the poor, hoping that they would no longer wish to wage war for their own gain if they already had their own farm. Numa inspected the gifted farms himself, promoting those whose farms looked well cared for and scolding those who allowed their estates to fall into disrepair. When Numa died at age 80, he left behind a daughter named Pompilia, who married Marcius, the son of a man who helped to persuade Numa to accept power more than 40 years ago. Their son, Ansus Marcius, was five years old when Numa died, and he later became the fourth king of Rome. Mournful Romans buried Numa under the Janiculum hill together with his religious books. In the year 181 BC, a flood supposedly uncovered Numa's grave all more than 500 years later, but Romans found his coffin emptier than Nero's head. Only the books which had been buried in a second coffin remained intact. The Romans burned them on the recommendation of the praetor for fear they would fall into the hands of foreigners. Much of Numa's life is likely pure legend. Still, it is likely that early Romans lived and died under kings who came from different tribes, like the Sabines or Etruscans. It is less likely that only seven kings reigned over a period of 250 years. One of those kings might have been a Sabine called Numa Pompilius, but it is doubtful that one man created so many features of Roman religion and the calendar. Nonetheless, the years when Numa Pompilius is said to have ruled saw few wars and the Romans devoted themselves to consolidating their small chieftaincy along the Tiber River. Of course, later Romans did not regard the life and reign of Numa as a myth to be, to be dissected, but a historical fact. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.